What up, Fortnite fam? It's your boy Matt, back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to make you a better Fortnite competitive player. So you finish your training and you feel up to grinding arena. That's great! The first step towards a successful run is having the confidence to tackle new challenges. However, even with confidence and knowledge of the game mechanics, there will always be times where you make mistakes. But that's okay, and it's why we're here today. We're going to be lending a helping hand so you can identify what you're doing wrong and patch those mistakes up. So here are seven mistakes you probably make in Arena. One of the easiest mistakes to make when playing Arena is allowing your opponent to start controlling the fights. In fact, the reason this happens is because it's one of those mistakes you'll do subconsciously and not realize you were even making it in the first place. So what does it mean to let your opponent control a fight? Well, in this case, it means that your opponent is forcing you to engage in a fight that they're more likely to win due to their skill. This can mean engaging you in a box fight or trying to have a shotgun battle with you when your skills are not as refined as theirs. Essentially, they're playing with a home field advantage. Don't let this happen to you, but rather play to your own strengths and try to evaluate your opponent and their intentions. Here is an example of a scenario just for you. You find yourself being engaged by an opponent with a pump. He tries to get that headshot in on you, so you decide to pull out your own pump in order to counter. Here is where it gets a bit tricky and the mistake happens. Was this actually a good move on your part? If you have the confidence that your skill surpasses your opponent, then by all means go for that pump shot. However, if you know that your skills with the pump are not as refined, why take that chance? Engaging with the pump in this battle would be a mistake. Instead, try to get some distance between you and your opponent. This will force your opponent to switch out his pump for another weapon. Now you are in control of the situation. Don't forget to have the confidence to pit your own skills against theirs, but also know when you need to take a different approach. If you want to get better right now but feel stuck and don't know how to do it, then I have the perfect thing for you. One-on-one -on -one Pro Guides Coaching. Our world-class coaches are here to teach you from A to Z how to improve and get more mechanically skilled. They'll go over a master plan to help you improve and start winning. Join ProGuides.com today with the link down below. If you're playing competitively, then odds are you've picked up a few tricks during training. You have dreams of becoming a fast builder with the ability to leave your opponents baffled and you're eager to show off what you can do. However, take a moment and reflect on what it is that you'll really need to do at any given moment. You may be able to build fast and complex, but does the fight warrant such overkill? Sometimes a simpler build will work just fine and will save your mats. For example, Let's say your opponent boxes themselves in. Your next objective should be to climb the wall so you can make an edit and obtain an opening. You can also try to punch through. However, keep an eye on your opponent. Are they making smart moves or are they simply panicking? The last thing you really want to do in this situation is start making crazy edits, slapping on unnecessary ramps and walls. This is a sloppy attempt at peace control. When you peace control, you want to make sure that the walls you're placing down serve a purpose. If your opponent is simply panicking because you managed to tag them, then the battle is already half won. However, if your opponent starts strategically trying to get the high ground and place a cone on you, then you know that this fight is going to require you to pull out the big guns. If creative is where you learn how to execute and edit, then arena is where you will use them in real game situations. This means you have to select the right edit for the situation rather than try to pull off multiple edits at once to show off how good you are. In Arena and any tournaments you plan on entering, you are going to want as many maps as possible if you want to survive in the late game. There's no point in wasting them on battles that don't warrant them. So if you're into Fortnite competitive, then odds are you stream in order to gain a following and showcase your skills. After all, what good is a competitive player if no one knows who you are? However, this can lead to some mistakes, especially in arena or competitions. Pro players pull off wild tricks all the time. Their skills are what attracts the attention of viewers. One example comes from Raider464. His gameplay usually has extremely blink and you'll miss it edits, which has given validity to the courses he creates. These plays are part of the reason he's so popular in the community. Let's look at another player, such as Ducky the Gamer. He built a name for himself because he did what most pros don't do. 
which is play mobile. These signature skills are what set them apart from other players, and it can be tempting to try and get your own signature shots into your compilation of clips. But take it from us, your skills will speak for themselves as you spend more time improving. It'll happen naturally. However, if you focus too much on the showmanship, then it can lead you to make some bad plays which will only hurt your career and set your arena points back by a bunch. Okay, so we know how exciting it can be to pull off an editing trick. However, one mistake you should avoid at all costs, especially in arena, is forgetting to train your aim. If you are amazing at building and editing, but you suck at aiming, then you aren't going to get very far in a competitive game like arena. Instead, you're going to try to outbuild your opponent, but then fail at getting your shots in, and that's just no good at all. The main focus of Arena is to grind those points and make it to the Champions League so you can qualify for as many tournaments as possible. Even if you manage to outlast your opponents, eventually you're going to have to start paying the bus fare each and every time you enter a match. And the bus fare will just keep going up until it forces you to get good at aiming or risk reaching a dead end. Forgetting to train your aim will also hurt you when you try to tag your opponents from afar. You want to get a few hits in so that you can put them on the defensive and so that you can avoid storm surge. If you miss most of those shots, the only thing you're going to do is give away your position without getting anything in return. One very important thing to keep in mind about Arena is how the loot pool is different from a casual game of Fortnite. There are rule sets that prevent overpowered items from appearing. This means you need to go over the list and see which item made it in and which didn't. Doing so means that you can adapt your strategy to what's actually in the game rather than what you use to beat other players before going into Arena. However, as the season progresses, more and more items will be incorporated into Arena, so you need to be ready for those changes. For example, Shockwave Cannons were recently added, which gives players yet another way to rotate, scout the area, and get the jump on players. The Combat Assault Rifle was also recently unvaulted thanks to the war effort, giving players more weapons to choose from. Meanwhile, the Chug Cannon was deemed too OP and removed from Arena. At the time of writing this video, earlier this season, the Yellow Cube made its way to the center of the map. Something big happened, and that center area turned into Cube Town also known as the Convergence. However, if you don't follow social media or keep up with the updates, then the only way to really know what was going on was by playing the game. When everyone else was keeping up with the meta, the day it happened or anticipating the change to give them the advantage, you might have just been sitting there wondering why that cube was moving, which obviously isn't great. So here is the gist of things. You need to grind Arena to get Champions League and show off what you can do. However, this takes time and it is inevitable that you're going to have some setbacks along the way. Sometimes you need to take a break from playing and relax a bit. Perhaps you can play a few different modes. Grinding can be tedious and if you do it too much, you might end up completely burned out from the game. There is a healthy amount of time and an unhealthy amount of time to grind. For example, say you grind six hours a day. Sitting in front of a screen doing nothing else is definitely unhealthy, even if you manage to rise up the ranks faster. In fact, you shouldn't even have the time to do this unless you stay up late trying to get it done. Do this leading up to a tournament and you are not going to be prepared. You are going to be done with the game before you even get a chance to finish. Instead, try two to three hours if grinding is something you want to accomplish. It's significantly less time, but will also give you a much needed break. Then you won't feel like you want to get the tournament over with and your mind will be fresh and ready to make smart decisions. So with Season 8 Arena, more points are awarded for eliminations during the first three or four divisions depending on your game mode. During this time, you're going to want to go fully aggressive and land contested to get the most eliminations. While getting eliminations is fine and encouraged during these first few divisions, you don't want to completely rely on contested areas when the bus fare starts getting heftier. Eventually, you are going to want to slow down and find a less contested POI to land on. This will give you time to load up, gather mats, and reach the next fight fully prepared. Try a mini IO base, a gas station, or that blue cube we all know and love. You might still have to fight every now and then, but you won't be wasting bus fare by risking an instant elimination. Plus, getting eliminated so quickly can be frustrating, since that also means you'll have to sit through more loading screens and a waiting lobby just to hop back in and maybe die again. Well, that wraps things up for today. 
Did you enjoy the video? Leave a like and ring the bell to keep up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks we have to offer. In fact, why not take a look at the rest of our videos? You might just learn something new, and that will help you on your journey to become a pro Fortnite player. So, until the next time we meet, my name is Matt, asking you all to keep up the good fight.